we thank all of you. I hope you do well on your finals. <laughs> I was wondering about the chalkboard. Are you thinking of that on the bridge, or where would they be? It could, it could definitely start on a bridge. Um, we initially imagined it on the sidewalk it itself, um, but like Mike says, it has the ability to stretch and to move um, either to sides. Yeah, to the sides and, 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 and even onto the sidewalks um, further out off the bridge. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if Tucker is, 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 is if, if the message is, is across. So, so he's, he, he developed this idea of, of a basic canopy as well. And then, of course, a basic canopy requires a post. Okay, we need a post, a structure. That's, that's very important. But, how, but as we start thinking, we're trying to get to capture as much of all utilit utilitarian things. So a post is a very utilitarian thing, but if we embellish on it, widen it, make it a little fatter, if you will, uh, it can participate in the activity of the community. And as uh, uh, Tucker is, is saying, that we can make it, let's say, the post, which only needs to be probably four inches by four inches, now is four feet. It's, it has taken up that dimension. And if we're going to go that far, hey, how about uh, drawing on it? How about if we make it into a community chalkboard idea? We do have a little bit of an example at WSU. I don't know if you've been to the uh, fine art department. There's actually a big uh, a chalkboard, and it's it's a. I think I don't. I've never really done a survey, but I think the community really loves going up there and writing messages. Some of them are political. Some of them are just fun. <laughs> <laughs> so this whole third street isn't going to be any wider. In fact, it's going to get narrower. Is that right. correct? Uh, you know, I, maybe the mayor can answer this, well, I don't uh, know, but... but uh, with the option C, uh, we've got an Alta uh, concept group that's going to be coming here in a few weeks and will be showing us that later on in uh, May, I think probably the second council meeting in May, I'm guessing. And so with the bull blout that we talked about, yes, in a way it narrows the streets down. What it does by doing that is it slows people down. We all know uh, the narrower streets, people don't go faster on them. I'll give you an example of that. Just a few weeks ago, I spent a week in New Orleans, and I, I really love going down to Bourbon Street, and that's popular. Everybody knows what Bourbon Street is. It's about from here to that wall that are wide. It's amazing. I was stunned how narrow it was. But they have a lot of foot traffic, and, and the, the transportation there, I spent, I hung out there for a couple of days just and marvel of it and so and of course that's a city that's 300 years old we're celebrating the 300th anniversary this year because it was found in the French Quarter in 1718. point that I'm trying to make is that the wider the streets you have the faster people are going to go mm -hmm. it's one of those connotated things that we know through research so big trucks are going to go down this street well you know it would be very awkward to be sure but if you're a big truck driver and I had a dad who was a professional truck driver and an older brother that did they're going to find a different route to go. So they'll pick another route? Sure. Good. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that there won't be trucks go down there. Of course, there will be. But if you're a truck driver, anybody in here ever been a truck driver before? Yeah. You got, I mean, mom, you're going to find a different route to go, I can guarantee you. One thing that uh, as we, the students and I sat down to design, um, I started sketching some patterns on the street. Uh, <clears throat> some textural patterns so that uh, rather than just asphalt, smooth asphalt across the way, can we vary the texture? Can we use the texture as a way to create you know, patterns that are fun but also visually interesting as you approach something that is communal? Uh, can, we, can we play with the pattern? Not being a, a traffic engineer, I don't know. I assume they can do a little bit of that, but I, to, to what extent, uh, I don't know. But I, if, if indeed we can uh, go that way, I want to say, that, that that can affect the way you, you, you slow down and pick up from there. There is traffic uh, sort of engineering methods that can be both artful and doing something like that. And there's another point I want to make. It's going to be a four-way stop at 3rd and Hayes and also 3rd and Blaine. And if you're a truck driver, you want to be able to have that smooth access because it's stop and start going on a truck is difficult to do. Anybody that's ever been in that business before knows that. So those things themselves as well have a little bit of a deterrent. But like I said, yeah, well, there will be trucks going down it. But if I was a truck driver and went down at once, I'd figure a different route the next time I did it. I can tell you that. And my guess is you'll probably see that. That's what I'm thinking. Yes, sir. 
Um, I, I wonder to what extent any of these um, possibilities also impinge on the, the local homeowners adjacent to that, and whether the city has already talked with people about what they're able and willing to do not to. Here, you Excuse me, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just was wondering, that's a question. I was wondering to what extent has the city already talked to the homeowners adjacent to um, the bridge and the way in which some of these might impinge upon the, the uh, homeowners? Well, I know the construction of the bridge has been, the bridge deck itself has been narrowed a little bit less. And feel free to come up here if you'd like because of the constriction, if you will, and not uh, impacting the homeowners next to the next to the bridge itself. Now, Les can talk about the impacts of the design of the street on the homeowners. Yeah, there have been discussions, uh, certainly with all those neighbors immediately around the bridge site. Uh, we've, we've talked, and my engineering staff um, has talked with everybody there uh, about you know, how it's all going to potentially affect them or how we can work together on different aspects of it. Um, there was a question earlier about has the, has the, is the road going to narrow? And overall, no, the road will not narrow. The curbs will stay where they are. But within that, there will be the two-way bike lane on the north side. So the effective width for vehicles will narrow, but the curb lines will stay the same. At the bridge, it's a different story because we're constrained a bit so the bridge actually will be narrower than the road to either side. Of it. And that's so we can fit things in without having undue impacts on the neighbors around it. Um, with respect to your question, sir, about have we talked with neighbors about any of this, we're just seeing this today, the first time. So we haven't seen any of this information prior to this presentation. So we'll take a look at it. And if there are things here that um, seem like they could be incorporated in some way within the corridor, um, either within the existing right of way, that's, that's one possibility, or if it's going to perhaps spell out into the neighbor's property, as some of these would, uh, I think obviously that would be a discussion with those neighbors. Uh, I think the gentleman's name is Frank, uh, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, he was around in, uh, during the, our last workshop, and he, he was uh, involved in a lot of the tables. And he, yeah, we talked to him and he made clear his concerns and things like that. Whether he serves as a kind of a, a, a voice for the, for the neighborhood, I don't know. But I assume that he talks to, and people talk to him about what, what's happening and you know, maybe some of these ideas are already underway. Right, that, that's one of the reasons, you know, having talked to Frank a few times, that was, that was a concern. And I had said that other, that other um, homeowners around there have similar concerns. Right. And it's just, you know, I, if the, if the planning can go further, um, it's probably a good idea beforehand right. for the city to, of course, you know, make those. Of course, yeah. As you can see, I mean, we're very we're very interested in making this a positive thing. You know, right. um, how can we how can we make a pop something that is very utilitarian and might create lots of noise and traffic something to something that is a source of pride. And these might not be the end of the world answers, but uh, hopefully there, there are enough of them that we can say, you know, yeah, I'd like to participate in something like that. I think the kids will bring joy to this. I think, you know, the idea of planting something, of lighting something might, might do some of these uh, things. Yeah? Well, so I was wondering, is there plans to have the lighting? And what would be the plan for lighting on this? Yeah, we've talked to, you know, we're talking about lighting here. We've talked about lighting as a possibility on the structure. Um, I, I still think it is it is a possibility that we could add. Um, we're not quite sure yet what type or what quantity of lighting. Um, you know, there's always a concern about if we add lighting, does it create an impact on the neighborhood? So we want, certainly want to talk to the neighbors about that as well. And then what style you know, would we use if we were going to put them in? What I've anticipated is, assuming that you know, folks are comfortable with it, then we would probably put lights at each end of the railing system on both sides of the street. So basically the four corners of the bridge in some fashion. Some of these uh, concepts I think include you know, different forms of lighting and so we we'll want to take a look at some of these ideas and see if there are maybe some other more creative ways uh, that we can address that. 
Um, where will the stop signs be? East or west, north or south? Um, the, where the, will the traffic move through? Right, there will be two four-way stops at Hayes and Blaine. Other than that, the north-south streets will stop and Third Street will be open. Yeah. yeah. To me, I think one of the problems is that you're setting up a system where if you take a look at a big city like Seattle, initially, say, 10 years ago, it was a nice place to visit. But, and you can retire there. But if you look at what we have here in Moscow, and I'm stressing the, the car, cars, you're going to run into the same situation where if, I, if people wanted to come to Moscow, they'd say there's too much traffic coming in to mm. this place, and they, they won't stay here. Mm. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, the, 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 the little bit of research that I've done about why people come to Moscow is precisely because it, it, it is a tight-knit society. It is, uh, everything is within walking distance. It is precisely, at least psychologically, based on the idea that you can leave your car behind and never use it during the week or something like this and just walk everywhere. Um, so yes, I mean, I, 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 it, is, it is well known that people move to a place like Moscow precisely because of that communal, highly well-knit. Uh, uh, you can walk anywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, which is why I originally wrote the article. I mean, it, I, I, I said, you know, we, why would you want to deny something that brings people in? Actually, is sort of the source of a lot of pride and notoriety for a community like Moscow. Uh, but you know, we we've uh, gone beyond that at this point. So we're we're just trying to see if we, there's something we can do given this uh, entity coming in. Yes, Jeff. Yes. So my question is: Did any of your students consider making it a transit transfer station? The city doesn't own a lot of land out there, but it's kind of at a pivotal point. Mm -hmm. um, could use that fact that the city could manipulate the bridge to make a transfer place for multimodal. Uh, make it bigger and yeah, or and roof it, or right. ways that buses would be able to start and stop. And right. You know, um, I we did have a scheme that created a very nice roof. And I, I am a little bit sensitive at this point to not alienate the community, not to go, oh, well, these people you know, don't quite understand us as well. So I, I'm, I'm a little bit tentative. If, if we are invited to go that, that route, I, we have lots of ideas around that kind of design. At this point, I'm a little bit sensitive as to what has already been approved and it seems like underway. So I, I, I would love to make that a happy place and not sort of... Uh, alienated in any way. But I think that's a, that's a fantastic idea, creating a, a kind of a canopy that, uh, that generates uh, light effects and color and texture, yeah. Yeah, I think speaking to that, Nils, we do have a transfer or a intermodal transit facility over on Railroad Street, which is, was designed for that purpose. Our biggest limitation is we just don't have a very big transit system. We have two routes right now. We're looking at maybe implementing a third. Um, so we've got to use those spots. I mean, it could be a place for a bus stop or something like that, but actually transferring passengers there, that's never been considered just from a number standpoint. We haven't seen that need on that side of town or elsewhere in town. Uh, something, Gary, I want to point out. This bridge is going to be 36 feet. Across, where's less at? Less, this bridge is 36 feet across. Is that the length of it? Uh, width is 36, length is about 50 feet more. How much? 55. 55. Okay, so, so it's roughly the whole thing is 36 by 55 right. top. So it's, it's not like you have a humongous thing that you can do a big thing out of unless you want to make it bigger, which to me is. Personally, to me, that doesn't make sense because I think there's other things we can do better. I, some of these designs up here, and I think folks ought to get up and take a look at them. Pretty nice They're designs. They're great designs. Uh, you did a great yeah, job all for you. Mm -hmm. And so, Thank you. Five. this, with this <laughs> I'm substituting for a student. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, uh, we have a, uh, Professor uh, Roman, we have a wonderful community here. We're very diverse. I'll give you some ideas. Somebody mentioned something about Seattle. Yeah, this is Moscow. When I came here in 1977, there was uh, right around 16,000 people, a little more than 16,000 people. So in 40 years, we grew 50 percent. Or if there were, and it was student populace yeah. as well. So we're roughly 25, 26,000 right now. And my guess is in 40 years, uh, the way we grow, which is about 1% to less than 1%, which is very small growth, you're looking at 39,000 in another 40 years. Unless I live to be 106. I doubt if I see it. The point that I'm trying to make here is that that uh, community tightness, I think, will be here whether it's 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years ago, or 40 years from now. And I think people are very cognizant of it. We've got to be smart about how we do things, but of course we need growth as well. And we need growth to be able to do the various services and the things we do. And so how well we do it and how smart we do it. Myself, I look at third, the Third Street quarter, and I'm really excited about it because I think it's going to bring us a lot of opportunities when we get like this plan C into effect and we get the bike thing going. I think this is going to be a unique city in the state of Idaho. I'm just saying, I really believe that. I think it's going to be something that can be modeled from, Absolutely. from other people. Uh, Sam, man, uh, and I think, I personally think, folks, uh, that down the road, three or four years from now, we're going to say, wow, that's kind of neat. amazing. Maybe we should have done that a while back or something, too. So, anyway. Yeah, no, I agree. I think. Um, as I may have mentioned in the article, I, I think uh, the, you've got something really special going on in downtown. That, that street is well loved by everybody. And the question, the, the, the challenge as, a, as, a, as an architect and a, maybe a visionary is that how can we spread the goods? How can we now make that central street also part of the edges? Uh, obviously not replicated verbatim, but some of the good stuff there, can we, can we migrate it out to the, to the edge? And I think this is a this is a wonderful spot to start. Yeah. Thank you so much.